Welcome to Graver Load. I'm Anthony, and this is a very interesting release from AMD, which is they have this new HIP SDK, which helps um, basically get um, AMD more on a level playing field against CUDA. And this is, I think, a huge step for AMD, in, in my opinion, because CUDA is just run rampant through the industry. And as a software developer, that's all you hear about is CUDA. But this actually will help you get where you can start implementing it. And now you can run on AMD C GPUs as well, which, you know, opens up the playing field to be more than just a CUDA shop or a, you know, a CUDA workload. You can also now use this on AMD side of things. And I think that we, that opens it up so that you're not locked into whatever, you know, what, when you have one person kind of locking you into their type of, you know, closed system, whatever price they get to charge, whatever they want to do is what you're going to have to do. And opening it up is one benefit to this. So let's jump over and take a look at what AMD is talking about here. And this is on the Rock M. So this is part of their whole, um, even server side stuff, their HPC and everything else. But uh, this is more of, this is part of the Rock M. So HIP is part of it. So um, they announced, this was Thursday, so they announced that they are trying to make GPU computing, GPU computing, not NVIDIA compute, <laughs> computing, but they are now having GPU accelerated applications using HIP, so heterogeneous computer interface for portability. <laughs> That's a name. But when writing code that is compiled for AMD and NVIDIA GPU, so it runs on both. Now that new RxDK gives smaller developers the power to port existing CUDA applications like renders and simulation tools to run on AMD hardware. And this blog post is going to help answer some questions that you that you know we're going to have and we'll go through them here. But I want to just take a moment here. The big thing here about all this is that now you're going to be, you know, compiling that code, your small team, you're converting over from CUDA, or let's even say you're starting out and you say, I want to work on both AMD and NVIDIA. I want to keep it open. I'm guessing at some point <laughs> Intel might get on here um, if they keep releasing GPUs. But this is going to be just something that is more agnostic, more something that, hey, you run on the hardware you have, and it's not that you have to go out buy specific hardware for to do to do with something or multiple pieces of hardware to do something which is a huge benefit here so you know why do you need to use hip sdk and they go a little spiel here but you know hip, hip is a free open source api runtime kernel language with it you can convert existing cuda applications to a single c plus code base and can be compiled to run both on amd and nvidia gpus although you can still write pat platform specific features if you need to hip SDK provides the tools to make the process easier so that is one big benefit about the hip SDK and how, this is a good one how is hip different than rock M and so AM hip is part of rock M rock M is the open source GPU or pl GPU computing where um, hip is part of the rock M and then whereas AMD's Rock M platform is focused on HPC and AI, so high performance compute and AI, particular service but based application solutions. They should be, you know, applications, but I guess solutions work too. HIP is designed for desktop applications and you use it on Windows as well as Linux. And it doesn't come with machine learning frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlows. This is just the core functionality you need to do to do GPU intensive software like renders and simulation tools. So this is more of, this is not kind of like the AI particular side of things. I hope that they get there with this at some point and maybe making Rock M open more on those, you know, desktop platforms. But you're on Windows, Linux, it's on there. It's, you know, your simulation tools, your renderers. I think this is going to be a huge benefit and there's a huge market in those areas as well. Um, what you can do with the HIP SDK, so you can do a lot of different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of mentioned it up here, but um, anything you can do with the anything that you can do with the HIP API, but without having to contact AMD first, the HIP API is powerful tool set to make a full use of of it. You really need to, to activate support from our engineers. The new SDK makes things much simpler. 
we're, we're still there to help, but the SDK contains the tools you need to convert CUDA applications on your own. So this really kind of opens it up for you. Now, what some of the software that's already there is, you know, you got Blender, and they said that was um, Blender. So they had simulate graphic and simulation tools in the digital content creation market. HIP is used in Blender, and that was used for the visual effects to Amazon Prime's The Man in the High Castle. It's used in cycle render renders Max, and it's used in its cycles render engine. Max Store used the HIP to port Redshift Renderer used in movies like The Matrix Res Resurrections to run on the AMD GPUs, and in the Ace so and architecture engineering construction market to develop are looking to do the same thing with computational fluid dynamic tools as well. So this really kind of opens it up. It, I like what AMD's doing here, trying to compete with CUDA. It's years later, years later, but AMD is finally coming out with a solution. CUDA has been the gold standard, but actually going after this and going in this market, I think AMD is finally starting to approach. You're starting to see, you know, my complaints of AMD and with their GPU side. I'm sure it's not, it's just not me, but everyone is going out there. They're finally starting to put together a software stack that makes sense and that people, it looks like people are going to start using. So, um, how hard is it to port CUDA to um, HIP SDK? So, not as hard as you might think. I'm actually curious. Um, I might have to, I might just, I don't have any CUDA development stuff local that I've done lately, but I might take some, I might just try to crack at doing some HIP stuff, just me personally, just see what I can do. But both CUDA and HIP are dialects of C++, so if you know CUDA, syntax should be familiar to you, and the SDK includes tools to speed up the process. It's HIPify tool, tools that automatically translate CUDA code into portable HIP C++ using AMD's ORCI, I I probably pronounced that right, library. You can even compile a single binary that runs on both AMD and NVIDIA hardware. What doesn't the HIP SDK do? Optimize the code for you. Oh man, we wish that that would happen. <laughs> If you want performance of your software, you still need to fine tune it yourself, but it doesn't include machine learning such as AI, PyTorch, or TensorFlow. We all wish that our code would optimize itself for us, but that's not the case. That's why uh, we're still all employed and we're still trying to figure that out. Um, <laughs> which is which AMDs does the HIP support? This is actually um, very, very good to know. So. Everything from high-end workstations and gaming GPUs to laptop cards and even APUs. Below you can see a list of the GPUs AMD tested with the HIP SDK, but you may be able to support other cards in your own software. For example, Blender HIP Ranger backend supports GP, supported G, GPUs going back to the Vega generation. So, um, before we click on that, let's. Uh, you can download it here, read the documentation. Things HIP doesn't do, optimize performance of software, provide develop machine learning, things uh, it does do, or these kinds of things, and uh, um, port, port software to the AMD side. But let's go to GPU support here, uh, read the docs. I think I sign in. You gotta be kidding me. I'm not, I don't have a sign in for that, so we're not gonna see it. But let's look at what uh, Blender uses. And so HIP. This is what is used on Blender. So, to have a background, you have Radeon 7, Vega, RX 5000, 6000, 7000, the WX9100, and the Radeon Pro, Pro W6000 series. So, that is kind of what is supported. That is kind of what is out there. I wanted to make a quick video saying that I am very excited about this. And as a developer, this opens it up. So you don't just have CUDA applications and you're not just stuck into one area. Now, CUDA is still out there. It's the, it's the far and away the most used item out there, right? HIP is very much younger and AMD hasn't had something as powerful. I think that CUDA still has some areas where it's much better than AMD. Um, but I'm going to actually have to check out HIP a little bit more. I'm going to actually have to get it up and running and do some little development myself just to be able to test it out and see where it lands because I think this is a, another thing that AMD is finally checking off where we can finally see, hey, look at this. AMD is getting more on parity where NVIDIA is. 
you know, maybe as a development team. Let's look at this. We have parity. AMD are starting to get these really powerful, uh, or quote, you know, powerful GPUs in the server section in the server market. Heck, heck, if a company's looking at it and you got something that's CUDA and or HIP and they run just a performance on both. I can save a lot of money using that AMD system compared to what the NVIDIA systems are charging right now. That might be an option and you open yourself up to ability for a client to go, hey, you know, the hardware cost is a determined factor of this as well in our decision. We are deciding to go this way because of price. Are you supporting this hardware? You know, that can be a benefit too for you as a, you know, try, trying to make a sale and of a piece of software and I think that this is going to really help AMD in this market. I hope that they continue this. I hope that they keep pushing forward and getting this out there because as I like to see more and more competition and I like to see open stuff, you know, a lot more than closed off garden wall items that is just a little bit harder to know what is actually going on underneath the hood. So uh, at least this, if you have a problem, you can, you know, it's open source right it's yeah i think it's all open source here and you can uh you can get into things a little bit better to support you know what what you need to support i think that's a good thing so let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below i am really excited about this as you've already heard but thank you so much for watching and supporting gray overload i really do appreciate it like share subscribe to the video hit the bell icon all that fun stuff really does help out the channel and i do appreciate it helping to grow the channel this way. You guys are great. And until next time, God bless.